Block Talk. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make your own tree stand pretty cheaply at home. This can be a pretty quick project depending on how you go about it. Because I decided to remove all the bark off of my tree, it did take a full day to do it. However, actually assembling it and putting everything together, cutting all the pieces, only took a couple of hours. So this can be a really quick project if you decide to keep the bark on your wood. That being said, do make sure to do your research, make sure that the type of wood you're using is safe for your bird and that it isn't known to harbor funguses underneath the bark because that can be a major hazard. And as a quick disclaimer, we are going to be using power tools in this. If you are not comfortable using them, please be safe and make sure you find someone who is comfortable using them or use alternatives that don't involve using power tools, use proper safety equipment, and just generally be safe. We don't want anybody to get hurt. But that being said, let's hop on into it. The first thing you're going to need is a bunch of branches. Now you're going to want to pick ones that look nice and fresh, that don't look like they have a bunch of mold and mildew all over them. You want your branches to be relatively clean looking already. We just finished pruning our tree, and I know that no pesticides or anything have been on these branches, so I know we're good to go. So we've got our victim here, we're going to lay him out, and we're going to select what parts of this branch we want to use. So we're just going to go ahead and use some of our trimmers to cut this branch to be the right height that we want it to be, and we're also going to be using it to remove any of the little extra annoying branches that are just going to get in the way that the birds can't really perch on very well. Just things that we don't really feel like we want there. We just kind of want to keep the main base branches and the ones that are going to be thick enough to be able to actually support their weight once we've separated it from everything and the birds are actually able to land on it. Once that is all said and done, you should end up with a branch that looks a little something like this that's just kind of barren and blank and doesn't have a lot of excess on it. You want it nice and simple. We're going to go ahead and take the base of the tree, which we have cut nice and flat, and we're just going to drill a hole into the bottom of it. And this is where the screw is going to go in that's going to attach the tree to a base stand. Now, I decided I wanted to remove the bark from these trees because they are maple, and maple can sometimes harbor a fungus underneath the bark, so just to be safe, I did decide to remove it from this branch. Initially, I started with a Dremel, but that was taking so long and it just wasn't removing as much of the bark as deep as I wanted it to, so we ended up realizing that the bark was thin enough that we could just use a blade and just slice it off and it was getting down a lot cleaner. It was coming off as smooth as butter. So we ended up switching to this method instead. If you do do this, please be safe. Make sure that you are cutting away from you and have a lot of control. You don't want to accidentally snap the blade. Please be cautious. Please be safe when you're using these tools. We both ended up hurting ourselves. It's not something to be playing around with. Please be careful. But we're just going to go through the entire branch until we get all the bark off of it. And this took multiple hours of us both working on it. It does take a lot of time. For some woods, you don't have to do this. But because it was a maple, I wanted to be extra safe. So I did decide to go down and take all the bark off of it. You don't have to. It was just an extra precaution that we wanted to take personally. So we're good. We got there. We got all of the bark off almost all the way down to the clean, fresh, white wood on the inside. We're going to consider this branch virtually done. Okay, this is as good as it's going to get. So I'm going to go ahead and take a sanding block and I'm just going to go over the whole thing. Not too intensely. I want to keep some of the texture and ridges. This is just to get rid of any sort of little slivers and things that could be sticking up because we don't want anybody to catch a little splinter. So we're just kind of taking the rough edges off and just making it smooth. It's still keeping a lot of that texture in the wood and things like that. So we've got a nice lovely flat of birch wood here. Birch is another bird safe wood that you can find in hardware stores. So we're going to go ahead and take this to make our base. How big you make it is dependent on the branch that you selected. You want it to be heavy enough to counterbalance the huge stick that you're going to be attaching to it. So we kind of just guessed, we didn't really use any magical measurements for this. We just kind of drew out a nice straight square shape that we thought would be heavy enough to support the weight of the branch. Lucky for us, our first guess worked and we were good to go for that. Again, using power tools, please make sure that you are using proper safety equipment, put on glasses. It's no joke. You don't want to end up getting some wood in your eye. It will not be a fun time. So get someone who is comfortable using these tools. You will notice that I don't have any tattoos. This arm is clearly not mine. I was not the one using these power tools because I don't personally feel comfortable enough using them safely. So I went and sought help because I don't think I could do it on my own. 
If you don't feel like you can do it on your own, do not try to do something that could end up hurting yourself. So we've got one of the cuts done. We're gonna go ahead and cut it down the edge as well and then do a third cut just down the middle. We made two bases because we're planning on making two separate ones for these, one to go in the front room and one to go into the bird's room. You only actually need one. We were just cutting two because we plan on making two and it's a nice backup in case we messed it up. Don't do what I did here. Don't tip the whole chunk of wood towards you because you'll get covered in sawdust, which I didn't really think about when I did it in the first place. So our final cut, we're just gonna cut it straight down the middle and that's gonna give us one of our nice solid squares that we're going to be using to support the base. Now, as you can see here, the edge is very frayed. There's a lot of little slivers sticking out of it and we need to deal with that because nobody wants to get a splinter. So we're just gonna take our sanding block again and we're not gonna be too intense about it. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just kind of taking all of those little pokey bits off the edges, smoothing the whole thing out and making sure that it's not gonna be hazardous in any way. Nothing too fancy. Once that's good, we've gone and measured out until we found the very middle of this block and we're just gonna drill a nice hole into it. Uh, you don't have to actually do it in the middle, especially if you have an uneven stick or log. It would be easy enough to put it in a corner. We just wanted it in the middle because then bird poop is going to be able to land more consistently over it. On top of that, we're also going to need to drill a secondary hole because if you drill a screw right into this right now, it's going to bubble out and you're not going to have a flat base. So we're taking a really big drill bit and we're just drilling a very shallow little dent into it that's going to be able to fit a washer and the height of a screw. So when you put both of those things in, it's not gonna bubble out and have a wobbly base. It's gonna fit flush along the surface. We're using a washer here because we want to redistribute some of that weight. With how big this branch is, you don't want it to rip out through the wood. So this is just gonna add a little bit more of that distribution. So we're getting to the part where we put everything together now. So we're gonna go ahead and take the base, line it up with the hole that we've already put on our log and just screw it in nice and easy. It's very important that you did pre-drill this because if you go and you just screw straight in, it's very likely that you will split your wood and all that work will have been for nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and do this whole process for a couple more branches because we wanna fill everything in a little bit more. So I'm just plucking off all of the extra little sticks. Everybody say hi to my dog who is helping out with all of the stick management. And we're gonna go ahead and debark these as well. Now I'm gonna use these just to fill out the whole structure a little bit more because it is a little bit bare. So I'm just kind of making a man-made tree at this point and we're just gonna do this to a bunch of smaller ones that we think will make some nice perching surfaces to add a little bit more variety and just a little bit more to the structure as a whole. So we've got the sticks all nice and debarked. I only ended up using two and then one additional really tiny one that I added to the base for stability, but we just needed two little sticks to make everything a little bit more full looking. Nothing too intense like that. Additionally, we have also moved our giant log to the basement as well. And the reason why everything is inside now is because we need to go ahead and clean it again. All of these branches have already been disinfected, but because we just finished bringing them inside and my dog was near them, I want to make sure that I just do a nice vinegar wipe and make sure that everything is free and, and clean and doesn't have anything lingering on it that could have come from the debarking process or when they were sitting outside for a couple moments while we were doing that. So this is just kind of an additional clean. You do wanna make sure that you are thoroughly disinfecting these branches prior. There's a lot of different methods and techniques. I will leave a link down below to how to disinfect branches properly because all of these branches were left to soak and dry in the sun to be thoroughly disinfected prior to us actually debarking them. I've done a whole separate video on that, so I wasn't going to include that in this video as well because it is its whole own separate long lengthy process. But I will leave a link down below that goes over how to properly disinfect branches if you are curious on how to do that. So these are going to sit like this, soaking in the vinegar overnight just to make sure that everything is nice and solid and clean. We really don't want anybody coming into contact with anything that can make them sick. So we're just gonna leave all of the little branches as well as the log that we've got soaking overnight until everything's nice and dry. You really want to make sure that your wood is dry because screws just will not stick very well to a wood that is very fresh and wet still. 
So you want it to be dry so that way you're not going to be stripping the screw at all and everything's going to fit very nicely. So we're good to go. Everything's nice and dry. So we're going to go ahead and start attaching things. So this bottom piece here, we're using just as a support. So we're just kind of eyeballing it and drilling at an angle that we think is going to cause this to attach itself to the main structure. And this is just to make it so it's not quite as wiggly and so that way if more weight gets put on it from toys, it's going to support itself. We're also going to be drilling holes into the actual structure itself for it to connect to. And we're just trying to make sure that everything's sitting at the angle we want it to, that everything's going to fit nice and flush. Because if all your screw bits are going at different angles, it's just not going to work out very well. So we're also going to screw into the bottom of our little attachment support beam. And you can see that ours has a really big split in it. This is something I should have looked at before we selected this piece, but it ended up working out okay, so it's not that big of a problem. But if you do have a big split in your wood, please be sure that you go very slowly and that you are using a very small drill bit and working your way up. If you just slam a screw into it, you're gonna split the wood all the way down and it's just gonna be garbage at that point. So it's better to make sure that you do do it properly and drill it. Ours ended up not splitting, it ended up working really well and we got two perfect little holes that worked the first time for us. So we're gonna go ahead and drill our hole into the base as well now where the support beam is going to be connecting. We've lined it up and done a little mark on the wood and then we're going to do the same thing we did for the other base attachment, which was use the bigger drill bit to make enough room for a washer to fit in. Again, just because it's going to be having a lot of weight and strain against it, we want to make sure it's not going to rip right through the board. So we want the washer to fit in nicely, which I dropped on the floor. And then it's just quick and easy throwing the screws into the base, making sure it's in super, super tight and securely, as well as adding a little bevel to the top one for the screw as well. This was just to make it fit a little bit more flush because if they're sticking out, the birds might grab at them. So we just added a little bevel to it so that way it would blend into the wood a little bit better and the birds won't be trying to pick at the screws. And then we're just gonna slam the screw in there, make it nice and tight and secure and make sure that everything is solid. Naturally, you can assume we're going to repeat this process for everything else. I would not recommend copying what we're doing right now. Don't drill straight onto a table. You're going to go through and hit the table without a doubt. This is kind of a garbage table that we don't care about, so it wasn't the end of the world for us. But if you are drilling, make sure you're drilling over nothing and you're properly using clamps. Otherwise, you're just going to drill into a table and you're gonna damage your table. So we're just drilling into these two little attachment bits here that are just gonna fill up the structure a little bit more. And again, adding that little bit of a bevel with the really big drill bit so that way the hardware, the screws, will be able to fit a little bit more flush. We don't need washers or anything like that for these because they're not supporting substantial amounts of weight. We just wanna bevel it so that way the screws aren't sticking out. Now at this point, you'll notice that it's my hands that are drilling. <laughs> my significant had to go to work, so I had to try and finish this off because I'm a very impatient person. This was a very slow going process for me. So again, if you're not comfortable using power tools, either don't do it or make sure you're taking your time and being very cautious with it. I did end up getting through. I am familiar using drills, so it, it wasn't something I was uncomfortable doing. Saws on the other hand, not something I would necessarily want to be doing on my own. Now with this, I'm just making sure to screw it at a proper angle. If I were to go straight through the wood, it would pop right out the other side and I don't want that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drill where I want the stick to actually attach to and then go ahead and add the screw in there as well. We're gonna repeat this for both of the branches and we're just kind of eyeballing it, putting it where we kind of want it to be, adding the hole in there and then going ahead and screwing the whole structure in. There's no real magical math to it. It's just whatever you feel looks nice or what's gonna fill in the space, where you think you're gonna be able to hang toys and have things be nice and accessible, where you think some smaller branches might be needed. There's no real magic math to it. It's just whatever you feel is gonna work best for your birds, what you think is gonna look nicest. And the second one went in way better for me. I was really happy with that. And we're done, we're solid. The only thing left for me was to figure out how to get this up my stairs all on my own, which I did scuff up the paint a little bit doing, but that's that's okay, we got there, we got it done. I'm really happy with the way it came out. As you can see, it was quite strong. Everything was holding together really well. And honestly, I'm really proud of it. It's the first time we've made a project like this before. And I, I think it came out really nice. It took quite a while to get all the bark off of it, but you know, I'm, I'm content with it. And I, you know, the birds don't seem to be complaining about it either. They seem to be really enjoying it. 
They were both exploring and chewing and having a really good time, so, you know, I've got no complaints with it. But that is going to do it for today's video. I'm really happy with the way that mine came out. It was a lot of work, but I'm really glad that I decided to remove all the bark. It looks really nice. I'm really happy with it anyways. And the birds don't seem to mind, so I'm going to count it as a success. If you guys do decide to make some of these, please be sure to tag me on Instagram. I love seeing it when you guys make all the things in my DIYs. It's a lot of fun for me. I really enjoy it. And I hope that your birds love the tree stands if you decide to make them as much as mine do. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye!